But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, that was always something that um, he, he preached to us, but you know, at the same time, he wanted us to, to learn and grow in our faith. We learned a lot by just watching and understanding who he was and what it meant to him. And uh, you know, you're able to, you're, more is caught than taught. And growing up, you know, I didn't have a faith figure in my life, some person that kind of led me and taught me about, you know, about faith and about God. And, you know, Coach did that for me. I remember we'd be all leaving to go home, and he'd be getting ready to go visit parks. He, he wanted to hit two parks a night on Thursday nights during the season just to go see the kids and be around the kids in this community so that, you know, he can spread his message and give them his values and his beliefs and also just show them how the U is now. Well, let's start at the beginning. I am one of three, so I can only imagine growing up being one of five siblings right. and the amount of chaos. What, what was it like? Yeah, it was good. You know, my dad worked like a lot of dads do. And, you know, from eight to five, we were, um, you know, either in school or if it was summertime, it was wild. And mom was trying to hold her own in there. and. She'd have to walk around with a belt around her neck to threaten to whoop us and all that kind of stuff. But, but you know, my mom, you know, she really taught me and us as children what, you know, unconditional love was about. I know uh, you were also a big Joe Namath fan. Had a yeah, picture a in your kid. wallet? Yeah, I, I had a, no, but uh, I had two pictures. I had one. Like my bed would kind of go like this, and then there'd be a desk next to it, and so the side of the desk is where I, more of my pillow was. And there, I had a picture of Joe right there, and then I also have a little mini one in my wallet because he, yeah, he was my hero. He was a quarterback, and and he was the man. First thing you see when you wake up. That's right. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about high school. You are uh, an all-star athlete in high school. Yeah, I mean, high school was great. It really, it wasn't until my senior year that things really went well in football because I got hurt the first game of my junior year. I was kind of a late bloomer and, and there was other schools involved in the mix, but when it came down to it, um, I was like, I'm either going to Miami or I'm going to Ivy League, I'm going to Brown. And uh, as it turned out, you know, I went to the beach. I read an article where you said you arrived on campus with your own agenda. Freshman year, you're going to be the starting quarterback. Sophomore, you're going to be the All-American. Right. Junior, the Heisman winner. And it, oh, yeah. it resonated with me because yeah. I absolutely had an agenda like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, had my, I had it all planned out. Yeah. And then Jim Kelly showed up and <laughs> what lived, was it lived, like? lived my life for me. <laughs> yeah. Used to hate that guy. Oh, what now, was we're, that like? we're actually good friends now, but I, I never hated him, but I hated the fact that he was doing what I thought, <laughs> I thought I was going to be doing. And you know, I mean, I was really kind of, I started out on the straight and narrow. I started out like I'm on a mission to achieve these goals, you know, and then when I didn't achieve them, I just went in the tank. I mean, my life was football. My identity was in football. I, I think the one thing I learned in college was don't always get what you want and you don't always get what you think you've earned. I mean, it's a bottom, bottom line business. And I know it was, as is a lot of people's dream, to go to go play pro professionally, mm -hmm. and you oh, didn't yeah. give up on the dream. No. You I tried. Did. I did. I got, right, I went from, uh, let's see here. I went to the do I went to uh, the Broncos as a free agent, and... Uh, Get the, some good people around you. Yeah, the day I signed my contract, my free agent contract, for $8,000 signing bonus, by the way. $8,000. Big dollars. And, um, <laughs> But that's the same day that John Elway got traded from the Colts to the Broncos. So I'm like, okay. I already just got done dealing with Lucky Jim. Now Lucky John Elway shows up at Denver. And then uh, the next year I tried out with the uh, Miami Dolphins and that's when Dan Marino showed up. And so you know, I had Kelly, Elway, Marino. I was probably the fourth greatest quarterback in the world at the time, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I, I, I think maybe God knew that I was going to coach QBs one day and I needed to know what a good one looked like, so. Put you around some of the best. Yeah, I couldn't really look in the mirror and see that, so I had to, had to see those guys. Ugh. So it didn't work out. What happened next? 
Oh gosh, I had I, so many odd jobs. Yeah, yeah. I maybe. heard you were valet parking cars, so I'm hoping well, you were the one. Well, what happened? <laughs> if you want to get that detailed, I don't know how much time we got, but I was valeting cars at the Boca Raton Hotel and Club, and they'd have these huge events where they'd be parking car cars all the way down the golf course, and you could get make money obviously by bringing a car and getting a tip. And uh, every time I brought a car back, I just ran back to the golf course and got another car and came back and. And so, you know, after about a month or two, I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life. Yeah. It's time to try out for the pros again. My last job before I was coaching was a bartender. And... Um, Something tells me you spilled a lot yeah, of Yeah, I wasn't very good at that. <laughs> um, and as I'm cleaning the bar about three, four in the morning, I'm thinking, you know what, maybe I'll be a coach. And so I actually uh, ended up being a graduate assistant coach at Florida State. And that's when I met Coach Bowden, and, and uh, that's when my life really changed there. It's interesting how you got there, though, because you were headed to LSU. I got the job as a graduate assistant at LSU, had my U-Haul packed, getting ready to go, and uh, I got a call that night before I left, and it was Coach Bowden. Said he, he said he had a graduate assistant position with the quarterbacks. Full speed down the center line, playing in a hitch step. Left fullback counter, left fullback counter. So I, I called U-Haul and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to Tallahassee instead. And so uh, that's how it got started. Life-changing, <clears throat> definitely. Mm -hmm. I know you had a lot of success while you were there, but you also um, had some tough times, especially in your second season when you lost yeah. a player. Year two, um, Pablo Lopez, who's from Miami, he got shot at the party and then um, the next day Coach Bowden had a team meeting and um, I was in the room as the graduate assistant coach and Coach Bowden basically said a lot of things but he said, man, I don't know where Pablo is. I don't know where he'll spend eternity and he basically presented the gospel to the team and said, you know, God, you know, he sent his son Christ to die on the cross. Uh, to take on all the sins of mankind, and if we just choose him, um, then you know he'll he'll pay the price for your sin, you know, and and give you a new life. You become a new cre creation, and all that kind of thing. So he's kind of going through the gospel with the guys, and then he said, um, he goes, "Men, Pablo used to sit in that seat right there." He goes, "You guys are 18 to 22 years old. You think you're going to live forever, just like Pablo?" And he said. If that was you last night instead of Pablo, do you know where you would spend eternity? And so he's talking to the team, but I'm like, it's piercing me. And uh, I was like, I, I know where I'll go if it was me last night, you know. I go the next day and knock on the door and he's like, hey buddy, how you doing? And he calls you buddy when he's not sure your name is. And so anyway, I went in there and and uh, prayed to receive Christ and uh, and then I just began to try to um, obey, just kind of love and obey God from that point on. It was truly, you know, really was a life-changing experience. My, my old sin nature I was born with was eradicated through the blood of Christ. And I did become the, the new creation that you read about in the New Testament. I know faith helped you in your career as well. Uh, the day after Christmas, I believe, in 2000, you were named the 25th head football coach at the University of Georgia. That town in particular, and that football culture, they love you or they hate you. Yeah. They loved you. Well, I think they loved the fact that I loved the players. They knew I loved the players. They knew I was out for their best interest. And we were pretty good. You know, we were, we were a pretty good team, and we, we had a lot of uh, very good moments. But, uh, you know, in the end, you know, we didn't win enough championships. And so it was time to move on, and, and I understood it. I mean, we all signed up for this business, and yeah. so, it, you know, I, I left there grateful and thankful for the opportunity that I had and the time that I spent. I wasn't, I really wasn't bitter at all. I was, I was really more grateful for the opportunity. So you mutually parted ways with Georgia. And yeah, that's at the how time, you word it. That's, that's how you word it. That's yeah. how they word it. 
at the time basically you, when you leave and they pay you then you got fired and if they leave and you don't get paid you you probably just quit so anyway <laughs> Um, you at the time though knew that Miami had been interested, but you were you were set that you were going to take a year off. So I was th I was considering that, but as soon as the news came that I was leaving Georgia, I I got bombarded from former players just uh, thanking me for being an influence in their life. And you know I was thinking, talking to Catherine, maybe maybe God wants me to keep doing this thing. You know, it seemed pretty evident. I had opportunities besides Miami, but. Um, I was like, you know what, honey, I'm going to listen to Miami. We go, we're, we're all in, or we're, or we're just not going to, or we're going to sit. You know, so I had a chance to meet Blake, James, the AD, and some of, some of the board members, uh, athletic board members. And uh, when I left there, I was like, you know what, I think Miami is serious about being great again. And so I was like, either, it's either now or never, and we decided to do it. And we're very, very thankful we did. It also has to be fun that your son's out there and you are watching him become a pretty darn good yeah. coach. Well, well, John is very, he's, he's a very good coach. He loves the game. He's a great recruiter. He just, and he's, a, he's like the rest of the staff. They're, he's a good person. He, he loves his wife. He loves his kids. He's the right kind of guy that you want to be a mentor to young people. You seem like you're proud. Yeah, he's a good man. And he's got a beautiful wife, Anna, who's really smart. And uh, and then, you know, their daughter, our granddaughter, Jaden, is the most beautiful girl in the world and the smartest girl in the world. When I sit here and I talk to you, and I, and I now know your story a little bit better, it's, I believe that God has a plan for you. And whether, you know, you're in college and you're like, wait a minute, why is this not working out? And now here you are, back at Miami. What is your mission statement? Here with these guys. Well, basically, I'm asking all I'm asking all of our coaches to do everything with excellence, and I want them to enrich the lives of our players. You know, physically, mentally, spiritually, and I want us to all be good examples of uh, what we're trying to teach them. You know, because really they they hear, but they they watch more than they than they listen sometimes. And then the last thing is, which probably could be the only mission statement, is to, you know, honor God with, with what we do, honor God with how we go about our business. At different points in your life are the definition of perseverance, and you've seen and show others how important faith can be in terms of definitely never giving up. What's, what's one piece of advice that you would give somebody who is struggling to kind of find their way right now? Well, I think um, I think we as people are we were searching for answers to life. Why do I exist? You know, and um, I quite simply believe God created us. He loves us. He wants a relationship with us, and He loved us enough to allow His Son to die for our sin that we really. You know, God is a just God too, and there there is a payment for sin, but He allowed His Son pay that price for us. When your heart changes, then you start doing things out of love rather than because you have to. It just changes how we think. We know that the things that we come across in life, and life is not easy, just because you become a believer doesn't mean your life's great. You still have things that happen. but. But I know no matter what happens on this earth, it's nothing compared to the glory of when I jettison out of this body into my, into my new body that God's going to give me and, and my spirit and soul will, will live forever with Him. You know, and that's, that gives me peace. Yeah. It gives me peace. Me too.